What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week got a really cool study to talk about. So as many of you know, I'm a big fan of protein. I did my PhD in protein metabolism and uh, I love all things protein. I find it fascinating. One of the common thoughts out there is that high protein diets are probably better than equal calorie lower protein diets because uh, protein is more satiating and there's also some evidence that it can increase energy expenditure. And much of this is thought to be due to the effects on lean body mass. So we do know that higher protein diets can increase lean body mass relative to lower protein diets, and that they also maintain lean body mass better during a calorie deficit phase uh, compared to a lower protein diet. So that's kind of been thought as how, you know, protein, higher protein diets um, increase energy expenditure but there's also evidence that they have more acute effects. And there was a new study that came out out of the University of Alberta. So they had both males and females, which is unique. A lot of studies only have males and they were all healthy and they were all eating at their maintenance calories. So they were eating at a level that should maintain uh, their body weight. And it was, it was a very short trial. It was a three day run in um, and they had them come in, get their uh, resting, energy expenditure assessed. And then based off, based off of that, they kind of used a coefficient to determine what their maintenance calories should be. And they had them on a standardized three day run in diet, which was 55% uh, carbohydrate, 30% uh, fat and 15% protein. And then they randomized them either to a high protein diet that was uh, achieved the high protein through a supplement or basically the same diet. So a 15% protein, 55% carb, 30% uh, fat diet. The high protein diet was closer to 40% protein, 35% carbohydrate, and 25% fat. So close on the fat, um, most of the change came from trading up protein for carbohydrate. What they were looking to assess via direct calimetry, does that higher protein feeding uh, impact energy expenditure? And the way they measured this was in a whole body calimetry unit, which is basically direct calimetry. It is extremely precise. It, you know, it's a metabolic ward. So they're in a chamber that can basically assess all their energy expenditure. Uh, it is the most accurate way to do it. The other good thing about this experiment was it was what's called a crossover design. So basically each person was going to do both diets uh, separated by a period of time, a washout period. And that allows them to use each individual as their own control and statistically usually makes things more accurate, more precise. Um, so each individual is their own control. So that's really cool and makes it even more tightly controlled. What are we talking about here in terms of what their calorie intake was, protein, carbs, fats, we talked about the percentages. So in terms of calories, both groups were basically eating right around 2,100 calories per day. Protein wise, the high protein diet was getting on average 211 grams of protein per day. Now this varied between individuals uh, because obviously like if you're looking at, you know, uh, larger people, they're getting more total calories, meaning they're getting more protein and more of the other macronutrients, et cetera. But on average, the protein intake was about 211 grams. For the control diet, it was 83 grams. So a big difference in protein. Also a pretty sizable difference in carbohydrate intake, um, 186 grams on average in the high protein group versus 295 in the control group. Fat wise in the high protein diet, it was 58 grams on average versus 72 grams in the control diet. Now, interestingly, one other metric that we'll come back to on this is the sugar intake in the high protein group. So remember they were getting the protein from a supplement. Well, that supplement had quite a bit of sugar in addition to protein in it. In fact, the daily sugar intake in the high protein group was 179 grams. Whereas in the low pro or the, sorry, the control diet, it was uh, 4.5 grams. So a huge difference in sugar intake. We'll come back to that later. They had them try these two different diets and they looked at total energy expenditure. They also looked at resting energy expenditure, basal metabolic rate, uh, which are slightly different, even though they sound like the same thing, sleeping metabolic rate. And what they found was that total energy expenditure was about 80 calories per day higher on the high protein diet. And also the sleeping energy expenditure was higher. Now, what wasn't different was the resting energy expenditure and the basal metabolic rate. 
That indicates that proteins effects on acute energy expenditure seem to function through the thermic effect of food and sleeping energy expenditure. Meaning basically you burn more calories while you're sleeping and you also burn more calories postprandially. Meaning after you eat a meal, uh, your body has to expend more energy to get energy out of the food you're eating on a high protein diet. Now again, I don't wanna oversell this. It's 80 calories a day difference. That's not a huge difference. So they also examined what is the total energy balance, meaning a, a zero is basically they are at energy balance. You know, if it's negative, it means they would presumably be in an energy deficit or a calorie deficit. If it's positive, uh, they're in a surplus. Now they were targeting for them to be at maintenance, but obviously it's hard to get the exact number right. The control diet was at about 90 calories positive energy balance, whereas the high protein diet was at a negative 20 calories uh, energy balance. So from feeding the high protein diet, there was a spontaneous negative energy balance induced, meaning they spontaneously went into a calorie deficit even though they were eating the same amount of calories per day. Now further, what's interesting is the protein balance was greater uh, on the high protein diets. I think it was about 90 grams difference. That's to be expected. Eating a higher protein diet gives you more protein coming in, which you would expect to improve protein balance. It also resulted in a significantly more negative fat balance, meaning the people on the higher protein diet were burning, well, not just burning, but losing more fat uh, per day because Fat balance is not just how much fat you burn, it's also the balance between how much fat you store versus how much fat you burn, which should be how much body fat you lose or gain overall. So on the high protein diet, it was a negative fat balance of 20 grams per day, meaning they were losing 20 grams of fat per day. Whereas on the control diet, it was basically at balance. It was one, so they were gaining one gram of fat per day. Now there were some, some differences between men and female, but they weren't statistically different. In general, men were just higher numbers on everything compared to women, but the differences didn't seem to be statistically different. Now, the one caveat to that is they did measure like blood levels of HDL, which were higher in women, um, but that's probably due to uh, differences in hormones like estrogen. So there's a lot of like really complicated analysis in here, but basically to say that a high protein diet, even with calories equated, resulted in better protein accretion and increased fat loss. Uh, in the short term, that's important to point out, this was only over two days, but it resulted in greater fat loss compared to an isocaloric control diet that was lower in protein. Now, a few things to point out with this. People will look at this and say, well, doesn't that mean that, you know, calories in, calories out is bullshit? No, no, no. Remember, energy expenditure is calories out. This effect of protein is still accounted for in the CO portion of calories in, calories out. Now, other people will say, well, look, this just proves that all calories are not created equal. Calories are simply a unit of measurement. A calorie is a calorie because it's just measuring something. That's like saying not all miles per hour are created equal or not all, uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius are created equal. Now, not all sources of calories are created equal. Not all sources of calories have the same effect on satiety and in this case, energy expenditure. Protein definitely seems to have a bigger effect on energy expenditure compared to carbohydrate or fat. I wanna be clear, we're talking about 80 calories a day, maybe 20 grams difference in fat balance. That's relatively small, it certainly doesn't mean you can eat as much protein as you want and you know not gain body fat. What it does seem to suggest is when all other things are equal, having more protein is probably beneficial for lean body mass retention and getting a little bit more energy expenditure out of your diet, thus possibly creating a little bit more fat loss on a calorie per calorie basis. I also wanted to point out the sugar intake. A lot of people out there will say you can't lose fat on a high sugar diet or you know, insulin uh, reduces energy expenditure. It didn't seem to have that effect here. 175 grams of sugar intake and they still saw increases in energy expenditure. I think what that also points out is there's quite a few people out there who tout the benefits of low carb diets on metabolic rate, energy expenditure, 
uh, those sorts of things. I think what we can say from this, as well as some other studies, uh, one from Johnston from 2005 comes to mind, is that the metabolic advantage to reduced carbohydrate diets is not due to the reduced carbohydrate, it's due to the higher protein content. And this is borne out by a meta-analysis by Kevin Hall, where he showed that when you equate calories and protein between various diets and vary the carbohydrate and fat content, you don't really see much difference in total daily energy expenditure or fat balance. And if anything, it seems to favor low fat diets by a slight amount. So what are the practical takeaways from this? Well, practical takeaways are that protein is awesome still. If you are concerned about, you know, getting more bang for your caloric buck, a higher protein diet seems to be better. How high protein? In this study, they were definitely over uh, two grams per kilo. It's probably closer to 2.5 grams per kilogram. My general recommendations are anywhere from 1.6 to 2.4 grams per kilo. If you wanna go based on lean body mass, 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilogram of lean body mass will get you most of the benefits of protein. There are very few studies examining higher intakes than that, especially when it comes to like very tightly controlled energy expenditure studies. So we do need more information on those, but it definitely seems like protein has an effect on increasing energy expenditure. And that's probably through its effects on protein turnover. So part of my research uh, in graduate school was we looked at equating calories, protein, and actually we equated total protein and just varied the source of protein. And basically, we saw that higher quality protein sources produced better fat loss, better lean body mass retention, and that it was probably due to the effects on protein synthesis. Higher protein increases muscle protein synthesis. That is an energetically expensive process. The whole process of protein turnover is energetically expensive. You're kind of wasting ATP, which is a good thing for fat loss. I know this study was a lot to unpack, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Really cool study. You can view it. I think it's free online. You click the link in the description to view the full study. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, like the video. Please click the links in the description to support us. Our nutrition coaching app, which is based off of research just like this, as well as our new supplement range, Outwork Nutrition. Hope you guys have a great week. Mm -hmm.